Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Hey, grab yourself a cup of tea and join me today because it's going to be a wonderful program. I'm, I'm so glad you're there. And um, for you regular ones, you know I do this a lot. I like to welcome the new viewers because I really trust God every day for brand new viewers. And I believe you're out there and I want you to know you're welcome. Come right on in and join us. I think you're going to really get a lot out of this uh, program because I have a very special guest today. In the first place, she's very beautiful. She was Mrs. Illinois. Now, I never did <laughs> join a beauty, a beauty pageant, but it's kind of nice, you know, to be around somebody who won. And not only that, she has written a book, Broken Places Can Be the Sweetest Places. Now, listen to me. I'm talking to some right now. You think your marriage is dead, buried, could not be repaired or resurrected no matter what kind of miracles performed, but that's not true. And this lady can tell you exactly what God can do when everything inside of you is dead. Have you ever felt that way? Just dead when it came to certain relationships. And also she has five children. She is co-pastor with her husband in a great church in Illinois. So you're going to love looking at and listening to Jennifer Cruz. Then I'm going to join Stephanie. You know, I really don't like pumpkin that much, but around this time of year, I don't know. I get a kind of a craving for it. So we're going to make a pumpkin cake with orange glaze. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Before I join Stephanie, though, I've got this very, very small book. And it says, putting an X through anxiety. I think we have an epidemic of anxiety in this nation. If we didn't, why would be so many people, 70,000 people a year dying from an overdose of opioids, which most of it probably is because of anxiety. And God never intended you to live like that, just anxious about every single thing. That's everything God opposes. So this book takes you through what the scripture has to say about anxiety, and you can have it for any amount. Just call us. That number's on your screen, 1-800-229-0059. Or write to us and send us an offering, and we'll send it to you, uh, whatever the Lord lays on your heart. Uh, we'll be very, very glad to send it out to you, and you can tell it's very small. You can read it quickly. And I hope apply it to your life if you live in a lot of anxiety, as many Americans do. So I hope you'll take advantage of that. The 800 number is for your credit card, and the address is if you want to send a check. And I'm over here with Sister Stephanie. You just got back. You were in a, I did. I went to, to North a wedding. Carolina. Mm -hmm. I went to a plantation wedding in North Carolina. It was 37 degrees when we left, and I was in heaven. I know. Why didn't you bring it with you? I tried. It, oh, it's, no. a cooler, it's a little cooler today. Mm -hmm. outside so yes but um, let me just tell you guys how good Arthlane Rippey is okay she's talking 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 we have noise going on in the studio <laughs> yeah that one <laughs> noise we have a camera, camera that uh, needs some WD-40 okay and it's like, that all it needs rain, rain. and she's just talking along so she, she's so good <laughs> keep going keep going okay uh okay do so, you like pumpkin so very much uh -huh. yes I love it do you know several years ago when I had uh, the same guest for a whole week at Thanksgiving that was Dr. Ken Whitten from the big Idlewild Baptist Church had him on every day for a week and every day we fixed a pumpkin recipe I know because then I got pumpkined out I remember that because yes. we made pumpkin pumpkin everything and yes. I was like okay I'm done with the pumpkin for now okay I'm so, gonna work on the glaze yes for the glaze you have two ounces of um, softened cream cheese a quarter cup of powdered sugar fat-free milk, and some or orange extract. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have two cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking powder and ground cinnamon, a teaspoon each of baking soda, salt, ground ginger, ground nutmeg, a can of pumpkin, three eggs, half a cup of brown sugar. I'm trying to, I'm trying to help you out for all those people that say, give us what we're, a half a cup of um, sugar, a uh, half a cup of applesauce and vegetable oil. I'm going to mix all the dry ingredients together, and then I'm going to mix mm -hmm. all the wet ingredients together, and I'm going to mix them all together, okay? So here's two cups of flour. Well, I when I, when I saw that orange glaze, mm, I knew it that smelled, was... That orange extract smells so good. Now, let me tell you. So I went to that wedding, mm -hmm. and now all I can think about 
is oh. bacon wrapped scallops because it was the best bite of food I have ever she had has in my been whole entire out life. Out of her mind. My whole life. Rose Hill Plantation, if anyone has an inn, North Carolina, to the caterer, I need that recipe. Well, uh, did you bring it home? Did I bring? Putting a little bit of uh, the orange glaze. Did I bring what home? Recipe for the No, scallops. I'm asking for it. I'm begging. Is he? Oh. <laughs> I'm begging if anyone knows anybody. Do you think he's watching you? Well, I don't know. Maybe somebody knows somebody that knows somebody. That's how That's it works. That's very possible. So I have all the dry ingredients. I, I need a bowl for the wet ingredients. Okay, I'll find you one. Thank you. Plus, I need you to spray the pan. Mm -hmm. Well, I need you to do a few things today, Miss Ripley. Is thank this you. a good size bowl? Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you Usually, so all I do is spray the pan. So, and she does such a good job. At least today, so I have I'm a can of showing pumpkin. that I have other gifts. Yes, you are gifted. You've made a few things that you've surprised us. So, yeah. So yeah, the food at the wedding was unbelievably amazing. Do you know? We were talking this morning. The huge dinners and everything they put on weddings now it was amazing it was mine so... honey you got cake and punch yeah and but we did have a kind of a pretty cake but yeah oh everything was gorgeous I then mean, by the plantation. time my daughter got married there was like more demand yes for... yes there's oil that was applesauce oil brown sugar and three eggs i have heard different figures of what a um wedding costs nowadays and oh it's it's mind-boggling like I would rather you spend that money on your first house yes. or to make sure you're not in debt when I you mean, start it's, off it's in the thousands of dollars oh tens of thousands easy it's craziness so. okay so I'm gonna mix the wet and dry we have a 13 by 9 pan that you've sprayed well I'm glad my kids are married right because I have one coming and I'm yeah, not a little bit. Mm-hmm. That well, looks delicious. Well, this you did had a great a, job. It cratered somehow. Huh. Well, there's but, no explaining it, but once you put no. the sauce over it, you won't be able to see it. No, the way we cook, you know, it makes everybody feel at home. Cause well, well, you get what you get with us. I'm sorry. Yeah. We have no test kitchens. <laughs> you know, one time I saw on TV. Um, Martha Stewart's. Yes. She had several kitchens. Yeah. This is it. You, what Every you kind of what decor you, you can imagine. So we are just what we are. This is this is it. Yes. Okay. And that's okay. We like it that way. Mm -hmm. So then you bake it for about 30 minutes at 350. Mm -hmm. Okay. This was that baked, looks delicious. This bit was baked upstairs though, and it's oh kind of like <laughs> kind of like the oven was. Tilted. I'm making them. Got a little crater in it, but can't explain it. I don't know why that oven's brand new. Yeah, maybe one of the shelves in. Yeah, crazy. Look at that beauty mm -hmm. mess that you're. I'm gonna taste this. Oh yeah. So good. Yeah, the orange makes it. Oh well, yeah. Okay, so which should be great with the pumpkin. Yeah, so good. <laughs> well, I want to talk to Jennifer, so well, I'm get gonna... cut a piece real quick. I think, Are you it needs, taste it? I think it needs more, but okay. We'll take a little corner here. You can make a double batch of that um, glaze. Yeah, the orange glaze yeah. thing, absolutely. And really, after my eating frenzy over the weekend, I shouldn't taste it, but I would like to. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a little bite. Oh, thanks. <laughs> mm. And then I just need to walk away. Take a bite, walk mm -hmm. away. Thank you. Ah, what do you say? That orange mm -hmm. is amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would put a little orange zest in it mm -hmm. too. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to talk to Jennifer. So if you want this recipe, it's absolutely free. Information's coming up on your screen. Email's the best, but any way that we can get it to you, we'll be glad to do that. And after that, you're going to meet my guest Jennifer Cruz. I think you're going to love her. So stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers.
I'm always glad to welcome a beauty queen to the program because I know that's what women are interested in. In fact, I've had one Miss America, maybe two, in the last 20 years. Welcome. Thank you. And congratulations. Thank you. How long ago was that? It was 2012. That's not too long ago. So not too long ago. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I was glad when I started hearing about Mrs. Uh, yes. State or America or whatever. So was I. Yeah, honor, honor the ladies who Yeah, married. the married women. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, welcome uh, to the show. And this book is full of ministry. Yes. Um, I, as I got into it, I thought, boy, you are honest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's not, not every Christian is as honest as you are, I would say. Yeah. And, and that's why I made the remarks at the beginning of the show, that if you really think your marriage is dead, yes. There's nothing that, that God can, mm -hmm. can't do. Yes. Uh, I, you know, I want you to tell your story um, because it seems like there's so much brokenness from very young ages mm -hmm. nowadays that, that really mm -hmm. need the Lord to heal yes. so that you can be whole like he wants. So uh, your dad walked out when you were yes, an infant, right? right when I was born. And I think, you know, a lot of times people see me and they think that, Oh, you've had a perfect life. Yeah. You're so put together. You were Mrs. Illinois, but they don't see the story behind. They don't see the devastation. So right when I was born, my father did walk out on my sister and I, and my mom was so ill that she wasn't able to care for us. So immediately just this abandonment, you know, right when I was born, went to go live with my grandparents, which I absolutely loved, then had to come back home with mom which was challenging because she was going through some um, mental illness um, issues, which she's just passed away this past January. And so, you know, kind of coming back into a home that wasn't stable was very challenging. I was um, sexually abused by mom's boyfriends. Then I was raped at 14 by a family member. And so I became this, just this rebellious, angry little girl. My mom couldn't handle me no more, asked me to leave the home at 14 went to go live with an amazing family had no idea what god was going to do how did you end up with that family did they just invite you in? yes so my mom was determined on having me go live with my father in michigan and i didn't want to because i felt like i didn't have really have a relationship you didn't with know him. him i didn't really know him and when i did go visit him you know i spent most of my time with um with his mom my grandmother which you know i loved and so I didn't know him, so I felt like, no, I really don't want to do that. And then she got a phone call from my uncle. And um, my uncle is a pastor, him and his wife. And he says, no, 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 please bring her over here to my house. I want to talk to you. And so for an hour and a half, he had to convince my mother to let me stay there and live with them in their home with two smaller children. What? Great is going to be his reward in heaven. Yes. That is very unusual. Yes, it is. Just say, I want to take right. her. And that's where you, is that where you were kind of introduced to the Lord? Yes. Yes. I mean, you know, we kind of grew up, um, you know, in religion and church and things like that. But it wasn't until I was a teenager that I really encountered God and encountered a relationship with God. And it was through um, the discipleship and the mentorship of my uncle and aunts. Um, immediately, you know, if I'm going to be living there, I was going to be going to church. There was, you know, no other way about, you know, that we were going to go How around How old were there. you then? I was, so when I went to, I, I was 14. Uh -huh. So I was 14. And so the first two years was very challenging because I still had all this rebellion and all this anger. And God bless him. Yes. And he had to deal with that. And it was, I was a hot mess. So he had to deal with this rebellious little girl, which having teenagers is not easy. So imagine, you know, having someone that's dealing with all of this. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I was there. I remember one time I was, I was, you know, back mouthing him and he took a newspaper and he rolled it up and he whacked me <laughs> right in the behind. And I was like, I was shocked because I never had that father with figure. Newspaper. <laughs> yeah, with the newspaper. So it hurt. He got my attention. And I think that after that, I never, like I was never smart, <laughs> smart mouth with him ever again. <laughs> Only took one time. You're a smart girl. Only yeah. one time. <laughs> yeah. um, now, where did you meet your husband who is the love of your life yes. and uh, you co-pastor with him? Yes. Uh, 
Where did you meet him? And, so, and did he plan to be a pastor when you met him? Yeah, so interesting story. I remember I was 17 years old. I had had an encounter with God when I was 16, and God really started to change a lot of things in my heart mm -hmm. and just really felt the call of God on my life. You know, I was going to be a woman preacher, which, you know, when I was growing up, there wasn't too many mm -hmm. of that. And, um, and so I was 17 years old, and I remember being in my bedroom and saying to myself, you know what? I have these jeans on. I'm going to put this cute little blazer on just in case I meet my husband today. <laughs> and it was at a, a Christian like concert, a crusade in the park in the city of Chicago, which is where I'm from in Humble Park. And sure enough, you know, when I got there, I was kind of like in the back, you know, the crowds were there and he was standing there. And I said, oh, my goodness, you know, I know him. He's come to my uncle's church. He was a youth pastor. He's come to preach at my uncle's church. And so we kind of, you know, um, bumped into each other and we started talking. He's like, hey, I know you. And I said, yes, you came to speak at my uncle's church. And, and right from the beginning, you know, that, that evening, we met there for seven days unannounced. Unannounced for seven days. And every time he would come, he was looking for me and I was looking for him. And I remember the very first night, you know, we were chatting and he says to me, he says, so are you seeing anybody? And, you know, I was just so tired of guys asking me that all the time that I had already figured out what I was going to say. Uh -huh. And I was going to say, you know what, from now on, when these guys ask me, am I seeing anyone? I'm going to tell them, no, I'm waiting for the man that God has for me. Mm -hmm. And so the guys would be like, oh, well, what does that mean? You know, she's crazy here. And so they were all back off. Well, not this guy. This guy throws his that hands up in the air <laughs> and he says, well, here I am. <laughs> and I was like, what? I didn't know how to respond because I never had anybody tell me that. So I literally took him by the hand and I went and I introduced him to my entire family that was at the park that evening there with me. Now, you did marry him. Yes. And you have four children. Uh, you lost a full-term baby. Yes. Uh, which is another layer of grief. Yes. And you adopted a child. So you five? Yes. So five, we currently have five. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Currently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, see what the next chapter is. Now, I, as I read your book, I could kind of really validate it because you're a pastor's wife. You have these babies and mm -hmm. everything. And you just lost the love for your husband. Yes. I mean... As I read, it was dead as a doornail. It was over. It was done. You left, right? Yes, I did. I left him. I left ministry. I left everything. I went to live with my sister. I grabbed our children, and I was done. I was done with him. I was done with everything. And I didn't, I never, in my mind, I thought I'm never coming back at all. I'm never coming back to him, and I'm, and in my mind, you know, I always felt like the call of God on my life, and I always knew that I would come back to ministry, but not right now. That would all have to be on pause. And so my sister and her husband very lovingly just took us in and embraced us, and we lived with her. You know, I think maybe in the ministry, um, you can forget you're human mm -hmm. because You'd had too much. Do you think that all the stuff in the past had been healed? I think I still needed some, some healing, and I think my husband needed some healing as well. We both needed healing, and so we, here we are, both of us coming together trying to do this thing called ministry, and the Lord did bless us, and He gave us great success. But in the midst of that, there was still a lot of character issues in both of us that needed to be dealt with. And I think it just became like too much for me. I didn't, I didn't, I never planned on walking out. It was just something that I just, I just did it. I just left. Well, also, um, that can, that can happen in the ministry. You, you get con consumed with the church, it takes a lot, all of your mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And the marriage is not being conducted as mm -hmm. God Right. designed it to be yeah. uh, you're too busy doing the work of the Lord mm -hmm. than to do the work of the Lord yes, <laughs> so yes. so you just left mm -hmm. and um, he came to visit you right and yes you he said, would he would bye bye come, yeah he <laughs> would back. come to visit me at my sister's house and I said I don't want you coming around here I don't want you anywhere near here I don't want to see you I don't want to hear your voice he would try calling me nothing I did not want to see him at all I had no love zero zero love 
for my husband. Now, what was happening at the church during this time? Because that, that can, you know, just almost set a church on a yeah, wrong course. Yeah. You know, I think that for so many years, because we poured into them, a lot of the leadership felt like now it's their turn to pour into us. Praise God. Yes. Yeah. And so, you know, we did have an exit, you know, of a mm -hmm. nice amount of people because we were a fairly large church. But during that time, the Lord showed me that your true friends will be with you in the good and in the bad. Mm -hmm. So I was really able to, to see that. And so the core, a nice core group of people just really stayed and they fought for us when we couldn't fight for ourselves. I think people are a little more understanding today mm -hmm. uh, than uh, when I was in this, uh, the pastorate. Um, they more or less would put you on a pedestal and you were supposed to be perfect. Now, you did come back home, but you stayed on the top floor and you put him in the basement. <laughs> I did. He I was did. real thrilled that you were coming. He said, was oh, no, so you're happy. Down here. He was so happy that I was, you know, coming, coming back home, you know, and, you know, the Lord started to deal in my heart. The Lord started to deal in his heart and the Holy Spirit told him, you know, Daniel, you've grieved me in the way that you've treated your wife. And so he finally started to come to a place of mm -hmm. recognizing, mm -hmm. you know, what he had done. And so now I started to see some change happening. While he's living in the basement. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I laughed out loud almost when I read this uh, because you begin to love him in percentages. I did. At first you didn't love him at all. At all. No percent. And then did you get up to 10%? Yes, and that was all God because I said, God, you know, if it's your will, because I wanted God's perfect will always, since a teenager, I always wanted God's perfect will mm -hmm. for my life. And I said, God, if it's your perfect will for me to stay in this marriage, then you need to put love because right now I have no love. And I remember the Lord put a spark in my heart. Only takes a spark. <laughs> Only a, a spark in my heart for him. And it started to grow and grow and grow. And it was beautiful. And you now call him the love of your life. If you just join me, I'm talking to the author of this book, Broken Places Can Be the Sweetest Places. We have the website on the screen. And I think this book offers so much hope because I know, I know women for one thing. And I know that so many of you are relating to portions of this uh, story. And... So thankful it's got a happy ending. So it came full circle. Did you get up to the 100%? I did, like 125, 150. It went uh, way over. <laughs> I, heard, I, I think uh, somewhere in there that he was just kind of happy that he got 10%. And, and <laughs> he was. And it began, <laughs> he was very it, thankful. It's the weirdest thing because I, I can see it in my mind. You're living up here. You put him in the basement and he the stayed basement. there. He stayed there. He was just happy that I was home. Mm -hmm. So he was like anything to get me back home. Mm -hmm. And he did it. He would be praying for me through the vents. And at that time I was so <laughs> mad. So I would see him in the kitchen. I would say, do me a favor and do not pray for me because I am not coming back with you. <laughs> you could hear him praying through the I vent. would hear him praying. He would just ignore me and he kept on praying. Now, th th this is a real miracle. A lot of people call miracles, call out miracles that I... I wouldn't totally agree with, but you didn't know Marilyn Hickey at all. And th during this bad time, when you're separated, you're done, you don't want anything to do with him or the church or anything else, you get a, a text yes. from Marilyn Hickey. Yes. And you begin to get these daily. Yes. That's a miracle, girl. It is. It is a miracle. And everyone spoke to your heart, yes. right? Exactly what yes. you, does she know that? Yes, because I've talked to her recently about it and I've given her my, my book and her staff has been reading it. And so it was a miracle for me to start An receiving text messages because when I was 17 years old, I received a magazine, my uncle, and I said, I want to be just like her. Mm -hmm. And my uncle said, absolutely. And so during this devastation, the Holy Spirit said, Jennifer, I remember when you were 17 and you said you wanted to be just like her. Well, now she's going to be ministering to you. And I started receiving all these text messages of hope. And I called her ministry because I'm like, you know, I don't understand. I never signed up for anything. And they said, well, ma'am, even if you wanted to, this is not something that we offer anymore. So we can't really tell you, you know, why you've been receiving this. But sure enough. Everyone was a message from the Lord. It was an instruction to let me know exactly what the next step was, what I needed to do. And had, not, had I not received those text messages, I would have probably made wrong choices and wrong decisions. The, the, whole, the whole thing is a miracle that your, your husband would, you know, stay in the basement until 
<laughs> till we let him out. Uh, the, the whole thing, though, it just offers so much hope. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can get this book through your website. Is this uh, Amazon and all those Yes, places? it's on Amazon. It's also on my website, jenniferjordancruz.com. Mm -hmm. So they can go um, there as well. And they can also follow me on social media under Daniel and Jennifer Cruz or mm -hmm. Instagram, Jennifer Jordan Cruz. Yes, and those are all on the screen as well. But it's called Broken Places Can Become the Sweetest Places. Uh, it's just such an encouragement that our God can do anything. anything. I think your situation looked as impossible as a stage four cancer. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an absolute miracle. Yes, it, yes, it really now, is. Now, uh, how's the church doing? It's doing so great. Mm -hmm. You know, the Lord spoke to me, and I remember telling the Lord, God, if it was your will for Faith World Church, that's the name of our church in Chicago, to be in existence, then you, you're going to have to be God enough to keep it. And he said, absolutely. And he kept it, and now it's stronger and better than it ever has been. Okay, and how old are your children? So our oldest is going to be 19, Faith Diamond Cruz, and then Aaron is 17, Caitlin is 12, and Ethan is 9, and we have an older adopted daughter, Alcida, that has been living with us for about 12 years now, and she's my right hand at the house. Well, this is such a such an amazing story, and do you ever sometimes just think, and I don't think this is a bad thing, um, the words of a great song, if, if you could see where Jesus brought me from, to where I am today, yes. then you would know just why I love him so. Mm -hmm. Your situation in every thought process, statistic, name it, was impossible. Yes. Yes, it really, really was. But God stepped in and he turned everything around. And that's why my heart really goes out to young girls. I have a lot of young girls. Mm reading my book because I am I am extremely transparent about my entire life because I feel like you the more are. transparent we are the more healed people can be that's exactly right <clears throat> and you were so you were so broken anyway mm -hmm. um, I couldn't fake it anyway <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> but the way God positioned you everywhere with your sister with this gentleman yes. uh, before that time and mm -hmm. then step by step he got you back together we are out of time but um, what a what a so blessing much. i think a great encouragement you've been to a lot of our ladies out there might be having some marriage problems you know what the message is it's not impossible not at all hey join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper god bless you if you should miss a homekeeper's program you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com Click on CTM Programs and then on Homekeepers.